At Rapport Leadership, we talk about the Palm model of leadership. What does it take to bring together all of the team members or all of the divisions within your company? And I'd like you all to take your right hand, put it out in front of you and spread the fingers as wide as you can. As wide as you can until it hurts. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. This is just a metaphor for what many teams are like. Each department is headed in their own direction, worried about what they need more than anything else. And it hurts. You see, good leadership, turn your hands the other way up like this, everyone's aligned and working on the same path. There's the vision where we're going, there's the mission. We put our individual needs to one side compared to the overall needs of the team. But what does it take to make that happen? You see, this pyramid basically shows where organisations tend to spend their time and focus. You know, when we look at it, in terms of the amount of time spent in organisations, the most amount of time is, well, what are the results? Where are we up to? Number two, most amount of time spent on, well, who's responsible and where's the plan? Number three is about, well, focused action and who's going to take responsibility for that? Is that where the majority of time is spent in organisations? When we build a pyramid this way up, what have we got? Something that's dynamically unstable. We can keep it up, but it takes a lot of effort to do so. When we build a skyscraper, what's the most important part? The foundation of an effective team is trust. So where in your organisations are you taking the time to promote and build trust? Is trust a noun or a verb? Like leadership, it's a verb. It's about an action. It's very easy to stand up and say. It's a lot harder to actually do. Do you want to know the fastest way to get someone on your team? Fastest way of all. Almost never fails. <laughs> Better still, get on their team. If you step up and you say to them, listen, my purpose in life is to help make you successful. We've talked about what your goals are. Is it okay from time to time if I give you feedback with the intent of keeping you on track for your goals? As your manager, can you share with me who do you need me to be? What sort of feedback do I need to give you to keep you on track? See, this is all about communication. It's about relationships. Without that, you never get trust. Without the trust, open and honest communication doesn't occur. You know, what happened at the beginning of this game? We had several teams that still didn't have a clue what it was really about. If there's no trust, people sit there and shut up because it's safer to sit there and do nothing, isn't it? When there is trust, are people fearful to put up their hands and say, sorry, I don't understand, can you explain it again? Jeremy, I still don't understand. Because it's that communication that really helps us then get collaboration, people working together. We ha then have clear roles and responsibilities where people aren't treading on each other's toes. We have true commitment from individuals and we have focused action and the results will follow. And this is how you build consistent performance in teams. Zenga Folkman did a study in 2012, studied almost 68,000 leaders from across the globe. And they asked the question, what is it that separates truly exceptional leaders? Do you know how they defined what an exceptional leader was? At the end of the day, it was someone who was meeting or overachieving on their goals. Because you know, that's what leadership is all about, bringing a team together to get results. Without results, if you're not getting results, you're not a good leader. One of the things they found was that there were 16 traits of exceptional leaders. And what I've done is I've just subsetted some of this data. So these 16 traits, technical and professional expertise, would you say that's an important trait for a leader? High integrity and honesty. Someone who takes the initiative. A drive for results. The ability to solve difficult problems. Someone who connects to the outside world. Someone who champions change. Someone who establishes stretch goals, who builds relationships, has a strategic perspective, is willing to develop others, will drive innovation, 
the ability to communicate powerfully, collaboration and teamwork, someone who can inspire and motivate other people, and someone who practices self-development. So to be an exceptional leader, how many of those areas do you need to be strong in, do you think? To be an exceptional leader, how many of those areas do you think you need to be strong in? No. Four to five. And this is one of the things to understand. Authenticity, it's about having your own style of leadership. It's about recognizing your strengths. Work from your strengths. Is it important that you're also aware of your weaknesses? Why? So you can surround yourself with other people who have strengths in those areas, absolutely. And so you can also identify your blind spots. Because sometimes you don't see it at all. So this is what the survey results say about how Australian managers and leaders stack up in terms of these 16 skills. Now the interesting thing with this study was it went on to actually ask people what do you want the most from your managers and leaders? What do you think the number one trait is that people want more than anything else from their managers or leaders? Who wants to hazard a wild guess? Integrity and honesty? All well, those who think that would be the highest? Anyone different? I don't see direction on that list. Builds relationships. Thank you. Sorry, you reckon? Anyone else? Be willing to take a risk. Take the risk of being brilliant. Do you know what the number one thing is? Someone who inspires and motivates me. The number one thing that people want from their leaders. The study found that of all of those 16 traits, if you're missing that one more than anything else, it's one of the biggest causes of failure. So you see, there's a mix of both management and leadership skills in there. What's the difference between management and leadership? Management's is much more about control, about efficiency, about systems. Leadership can be about involving the team, looking forward to the future. To be a great leader, do you need both leadership and management skills? Absolutely. What's the second trait that people want from their leaders more than anything else? Someone who communicates powerfully, who can stand up, say what needs to be said, articulate it in a clear, concise way. How do you think Australian leaders deliver on that front? Not very well. The third thing, someone who builds relationships. How much of your working week are you spending building relationships with your team? The fourth thing, collaboration and teamwork. What's the difference between managers and leaders? Managers tend to give answers, say what needs to be done. Leaders tend to ask great questions. Does a great leader have all the answers? Should a great leader have all the answers? What's the challenge when you give your team all the answers? You spoon feed them and they? They become dependent. You see, we all have this little uh, need to feel good about ourselves. When we solve someone else's problem, do we feel good about ourselves? We all like to do what we're good at. Any of you here super experts in your organization and everyone comes to you to ask all the questions? So much so you, ca you can't remove yourself from there? What you tolerate, you deserve. It'll happen time and time again. So the next time someone, one of your team comes to you with a question, what's the best response? What do you think? That's a great question. I know you would have taken the time to think it through before you come to speak with me. Obviously, what are the two options that you see that we have here? For some managers, I had to put a sign on their door, come with one question and two answers. Sometimes you need to just retrain the team. Have a look at this other gap. Takes initiative. What happens time and again when people get promoted is they want to make their mark. So what do they immediately want to do? Let's jump in and change something. 
Guys, I'm really excited. I'm the new managing director of our organisation. Look, I've, I've been over the numbers and I've identified six priorities that we need to change. And you're all sitting there, will this guy bugger off? What's your level of engagement? Collaboration is saying, guys, I feel so privileged to be part of this team and I'm here to serve you and help you be successful. Having had a look at where we're at and where we're going, I figure there's three issues that we need to actually have a bit of a discussion about. And I want you to work with me in terms of coming up with what the plan can be. That's what collaboration is about. If the team comes up with the idea, are they more likely to support the idea? Absolutely. And this is one of the interesting things. It takes ego to have the confidence to step up to be a good leader, but you'll never be a great leader if you don't put your ego to one side and have the ability to step out and let your team take all the credit. To ask the right questions until your team comes up with the answers that you want them to have, and then you can say, great, can you take responsibility of that for me? How do we build a team to make that happen? Establishes stretch goals. Is that what your team wants you to be doing? So what are the three things they want most of all? Someone who inspires and motivates them. Someone who communicates powerfully. Someone who builds relationships. So what I've done is I've taken these 16 traits and put it into what's called a ladder to exceptional leadership. And it's interesting for you to ha reflect on this and say, well, where am I at on this ladder at the moment? Because I believe that when we get promoted, we very often start out as a manager and it's a development process to move from a manager to a leader. The foundation of leadership, the two pillars more than anything else is honesty and integrity. The difference between those being integrity is about doing whatever it takes to keep the commitments you make. If you say to your employee, listen, we're going to do a review, your 12 monthly review next Tuesday at 2 p.m. and it comes 1.45 p.m. and you say, look, I'm, it's just a bit crazy, can we put it off till next week? What's the message that you're sending them? That you don't care about them? If they feel like you don't care about them, how likely are they to care about you? So integrity is about being impeccable with your word, with your values. This is about character, saying no to things you know are not right. And honesty is about the ability to not be nice, just to call it as it is, to be honest with people, to say what needs to be said, understanding that that's what they need. Feedback for improvement is the only way they'll go to that next level. If you build a skyscraper and the foundation fractures, what's the skyscraper likely to do? So just because you've been great up until now, how quickly can that fall apart? Pretty quickly. So as a manager, your number one focus tends to be results. You tend to be strong in technical expertise, ability to analyse and solve problems, and tend to have a drive for results. After you've been doing that for six months, what's the next level you look at? Well, this is where you start to understand that sometimes it's easier to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. So you start to take the initiative more. You look at ways in which we can improve the systems. And we sometimes set stretch goals over and above that what we've been set. Is this still management? Yeah, absolutely. And then you think after 12 to 18 months, well, there's got to be a smarter way to do this. And this is where we take more of a strategic perspective in terms of how do we go to that next level. And this involves stepping outside what we do day to day to connect to the outside, to look at other industries, to say what are they doing that we can draw on. To be the champion of change within your organisation. Why is it essential that organisations change? When we come back to Darwin's theory of evolution, why is it that some species survive and some die out? Sorry? Some evolve. Those that are most adaptable to embrace change. Did you know that 99.9% .9 of all species that have ever existed on Earth are extinct? 
So that's the part of the natural cause. If as an organisation you don't want to become extinct, you've got to embrace change as a competitive advantage.